if you came with your Bible, turn with me the book of Judges, chapter 6. As you turn to Judges, chapter 6, I pray you will understand my accent because you American, you speak funny. <laughs> God forgive you. <laughs> Hallelujah, I got you. Hey, I got you now. You didn't know that you have accent. <laughs> Hallelujah. Judges chapter 6, as you open there, I bring greetings from my wife, she say, we've been married 29 years, and we have five children, three boys and two girls, and God is blessed us. We thank you so much for supporting our family, for sending us, you've been supporting us all these years since we got married, now we are in the new office of Apostolic going into these nations and Africa villages. We sleep where some people don't want to sleep, but we thank God that when we reach those villages, in a few years, they become transformed. Amen. So God has been faithful. Judges chapter 6, verse 1. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Because the power of Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain cliffs, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, Amalekites, and other Eastern people invaded the country. They camped on the land and ruined the crops and all the way to Gaza and did not spare a living thing for Israel. Neither sheep, nor cattle, nor donkeys. They came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count the men and their camels. They invaded the land to ravage it. Median emperor vanished the Israelites that they cried out to the Lord for help. When the Israelites cried to the Lord because of the Midian, he sent them a prophet who said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, I brought you up out of Egypt, out of the land of the slavery. I snatched you from the power of Egypt and from the hand of your oppressors. I drove them from before you and gave you their land. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live. But you have not listened to me. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the ark in Orpah. That belonged to the Jewish, the Abinazite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. But Sir Gideon replied, If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our fathers did, told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and put us into the hands of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strings you have and save Israel out of the Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? But Lord, Gideon asked, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will surely strike down all the Midianites together. Gideon replied, if now I have found favor in your eyes, Give me a sign. Because of the time, let's go to verse 22. When Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he exclaimed, Ah, seven Lord, I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, Peace, do not be afraid. You are not going to die. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and he called it, The Lord is peace. To this day it stands. The same night the Lord said to Gideon, Take the second bull from your father's heart, 
the one who's seven years old, tear down your father's altar to bow and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. Then he build a, pro a proper kind of altar to the Lord your God on the top of the height, using the wood of the Asherah pole that you cut down. Offer the second bull as burnt offering. So Gideon took ten of his servants and did as the Lord told him. But because he was afraid of his family and the men of the town, he did it at night rather than during the daytime. In the morning when the men of the town got up, there was Baal altar demolished with Asherah pole besides it cut down and the second bull sacrificed to the newly built altar. They asked each other, who did this? When they carefully investigated, they were told, Gideon, son of Jesus, did it. The men of the town demanded of Jesus, bring out your son. He must die because he has broken down Baal's altar and cut down the Asherah pole besides it. But the ash replied to the hostile crowd around him, are you going to plead the Baal's cause? Are you trying to save him? Whoever fight for him shall be put to death by morning. If Baal is really a god, he can defend himself. When somebody break down his altar. So that they called Gideon Jerobabel, Jerobabel saying, let Baal contend with him because he broke down Baal's altar. Now, all the Midianites, Amalekites, and other Eastern people joined the forces and crossed over the Jordan and camped in the valley of Jezreel. Let's read this at four together. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew a trumpet, summoning Abizarite to follow him. Father, we thank you that in every generation you raise up world changes. You are looking for co-workers. You are raising them in every generation. Thank you, Lord, that in Gideon's generation, you found him. As we partake your word, I pray, give us illumination, give us understanding of treasures hidden in the scriptures. Speak to each one of us individually that whoever is hiding here and he has been hesitating and stepping back, this is his hour. This is her season to rise up. Whatever I plan to, to teach and to say as a man, I left the altar. I ask you, Holy Spirit, to come and teach us. In Jesus' name, and everyone say it. Amen. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Other versions say mighty man or woman of valor. Isn't it very interesting that God's perspective of you is very different from the way you see yourself? From the way you think about yourself? Because as a human being, we tend to be programmed according to our environment, according to our history, where we grew up our family background, and we think that's all we can become. Here we see a younger man called Gideon, and a, a Jew, but brought up in a very ungodly environment. His father rebelled against God and built an altar to other gods. And the whole community followed Gideon's father. The altar they had at their house became the altar for the whole community. So his father led the whole community in rebellion. And Gideon was born in such an environment. Many of us found ourselves born in environment and we have nothing to do with it. We just found ourselves born in there. But that does not mean God doesn't have a plan for you and through you. But the key is to have a personal encounter with God. And when you have a personal encounter with God, that changes your life. Yeah. Yeah. That changes your perspective, yeah. changes your thinking, and changes your destiny. Yeah. 
Because you align up with the plan of God by the Holy Spirit. Here is Gideon because of the environment he was born into. Everyone was scared of the Midianite. Their plan and their thinking was hide and keep whatever you have for yourself. Think about me and my self. Plan for me and my self. Plan for me and for my future. I'm not caring about any other person. So he was hiding food to eat. Doesn't care that God is calling him to be a blessing, to become a channel of blessing. There are so many of us, we miss opportunity to be channels of blessings because we are programmed by our environment. They were our background, our family background. But when you have a personal encounter with God, that changes you. Because one thing I just want you to know, that God's plan and thought for you and through you are completely different from what people think about you. People think about you the way you are. God sees you in the end product. And God loved to work with us. Before God created man and woman, he was just saying, let there be. Let there be light. Let there be a sun. Let there be this. But on, on Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 onwards, when God created you and me in his own image, image man and woman, he did not create again and say, let there be. He started working with us. Yeah. Yep. He started to fulfill his purposes and his mission together with man, yeah. together with people. Because when he created the elephant, you go to chapter 2, he created the animals, he did not give them a name. Yeah. He created the elephant. Don't you think God knew the name of elephant? Yeah. But why didn't he give it a name? He brought it to Adam and said, complete my plans. Yeah. Give it a name. Yeah. He brought a, a lion. Complete my plans, my creation. Yeah. So God loved to work with you, say amen. amen. He can do without you, yeah. but he doesn't want to do without you. That's right. He just loved to co-work with us and to work through us, say amen. amen. And so you see that from there on, God and the man started working together. That's why he calls us co-workers. We are partners with him. That's why in Isaiah he says, who will go for us? Whom can I send? Who will, who will we send? He wants to work with you and me. He wants to give us opportunity to be part of what he is doing. So when the time came for God to rescue the children of Israel out of Egypt, he saw the need. He heard their cry. And he said, I have seen, I have heard, and I have come down to rescue. Go ahead, God. No. Moses, I'm sending you. God, go. No, I want to partner with people to fulfill my mission to advance my kingdom. So Moses plus God, they go to Egypt and take a nation out of a nation without a gun, without a bomb, without any weapon, but the presence of God. And they crossed the Red Sea and the children came into the promised land. When we come to the New Testament, there was 400 years Dead silent. Nobody heard the voice of God. From Malachi to Matthew. And God said, now I'm beginning a new chapter. Behold, I'm doing something new. He came to a simple, younger, virgin girl, Mary. He said, Mary, I need a partner. Can you work with me? Can we borrow your womb? Can you join our team? 
It's God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We need a partner. Can you cancel your wedding and you give us time so to work with you? She said, I'm in. Let's do it. She didn't even call her fiance. She just said, let's do it. I am your maid servant. Let's go. You see, whenever God wants you to do something, if you call around the people, do you think I should do it? They will say, no, don't. So she didn't call her fiance. She didn't call her mother. He didn't call even her grandma because the grandma would say, are you stupid? What are you doing? <laughs> so she didn't do anything like that. She just said, here I am, God. Let's do it. Because when you know, when you see what God is doing, don't waste your time. Yes. Don't miss your window. Yeah. Don't miss your opportunity to work with God. Yeah. Her fiancé said, I'm not. Because her fiancé knew Mary was size eight. And now he has become nine. <laughs> he said, and I have nothing to do with that. <laughs> Stay away from me. Don't call me, don't Twitter me, don't Facebook me, don't do anything. <laughs> Stay away. You see, when you give yourself to serve with God, yeah. God will fight your battles. Yeah. God went to Joseph and said, what are you doing? You get back there. Call her. Can you work with me? Can you be my guardian? Take care of my son. Work with your hand and buy milk and take care of my son. Marry her and don't touch her until my mission is done. And he said, yes, sir. He married her. They go to honeymoon, thou shalt not touch. People have been working with God, denying themselves of so many things. And Joseph and Mary's family, teaming up with God, started the church movement. Yes. Hallelujah. In their generation, they teamed up with God to start what we are enjoying, to start what we love, to be part of. They brought salvation through a family of a younger man and a younger woman. Jesus was born because Mary and Joseph saw what God was doing. In the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 19, Jesus said, Pray, pray, I tell you, the Son does nothing except what he sees the Father is doing. Right. My question is, are you seeing what the Father is doing? Yeah. Because you are the Son and the daughters of God today. Yeah. If you don't see what God is doing and you become part of it, you will miss your window. Yeah. You will miss your season. You will miss to be part of what God is doing. It will pass by you. You will end up in a retirement home, in a nursing home. And you say, I, I always wanted to do that. I always wanted to be part of it. You missed it. Don't. You see, God wants you to, he, to see what he's doing. The story we just saw talks about a younger man who had never heard the voice of God, never prayed, never built an altar. He was brought up in an ungodly environment, but he started feeling this is not the life I was created to be. Because when the angel came and said, you're a mighty warrior, he said, if God is with us, why are we not seeing what we have been hearing? Because there is more than what I am. Yeah. There is more than what I'm experiencing. Some of you here, you feel like a, you feel inside the fire. Yeah. This is not all what God wants to do through me. Yeah. That's, right. that's not you, that's God. That's right. So by the time God comes and tells Gideon, you're a mighty warrior, Fear comes in because all of us does that. He said, but why don't we see miracles? Why don't we? God has abandoned us. The angel said, God has not abandoned you. Go in the strengths you have. 
Gideon is hiding food. Gideon is program is think about me and myself. God sees the end product of Gideon. Yes. God sees that Gideon plus Jesus plus the Holy Spirit makes a dangerous team. Yeah. Unstoppable team. And that's what you are the church. Yes. And when I talk about the church, I'm not talking about the building. You are the church. Say amen. 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 Say I am dangerous. I am dangerous. Say I am anointed. I am Come on, say it like you mean it. Say I am anointed. I am anointed. This is my season. my season. You must believe it. Yes. You must believe it. Because God sees the potential in you. God sees the power in you. Yeah. And he sent the people to prophesy, to speak life into your life. Yeah. When I came, when I was in Africa, I mean, I grew up in the poverty. No sugar, no essential things. There's war everywhere. Death everywhere. Dead bodies everywhere. You are going to school, you see which doctors and dead people. No hope. And my cousin was killed with his wife. Here I'm born again, and when my cousin was killed, more hopelessness. And the family from Whitby Island, they hear about that, and they come to adopt Moses, who was five. Sylvia, who is seated now among you here, by then, she was like a two and a half free. And Chelsea was like a nine months, ten months. And that family from Whitby Island here, Washington, they come to Uganda. They find me. Can you put a picture, my first picture there for me? They find me repairing cars, born again, but speaking in tongues, but no hope. I didn't know God can... You see that man with a square around? That's me. When I was a mechanic in the blue square over there, when the Tonga came, and when that man and his wife looked at me, they are processing it to adopt these orphans, and then they start crying, and the man said, God wants me to take you to, and I said, to where? He said, to Seattle Bible College. Because through you, God is going to bless so many people in Africa. And I said, no, you have a wrong number. <laughs> I've written a number of books. My first book is God Knows Your Number. Because many of us hide in there. The second book is Without Spot and Wrinkle. Another one is On Eagle's Wing. They're there. I mean, when you discover who you are by the Holy Spirit, you... Nobody can stop you. Yeah. So I saw this man and woman crying. Can you put the picture there, second picture? And it's amazing. That's how our village was. No development, no electricity, no water. Those are the kids. I'm talking about Jesus. That's the life I was. And God was seeing churches, schools. Nations. And he's saying, this man is telling me God is going to use you. I have to take you to Seattle Bible College. And say, no, you have a wrong person. I am a mechanic. I repair cars. I am usher in the church. I sing bass. And bass is good because you are hiding behind. <laughs> so we lead it from the back. I don't know whose message it is, but somebody is hiding here. And God is after you. Hallelujah. God wants to do something through you. Say amen. amen. You have hidden enough. Gideon was hiding enough. And it was his time to come out of hiding. Yeah, because God knows you and the potential in you than you know yourself. Right. Hallelujah. So that's me. Put a third picture there. That's how we start. That was first mission before I ever came to Bible College. That's what I was doing. Gathering the children of my village and tell them about Jesus. And how did I do that? Put another picture there. 
The reason I'm doing that is that as a mechanic, the company I was working for gave me a bicycle which had a small engine I could put gas in there and instead of cycling, I just sit and move. <laughs> and everybody came with, hey, born again man, we want to see a bicycle, it's so different. So when the kids came, I gave them a ride and they are going their way and the Holy Spirit said, so that is all what you can share with my children. So that's how God opened my eyes. I saw what the father is doing. And I started telling the children about Jesus, about Bibles, about benches. And every Sunday, I made sure we have candies and cookies so that the kids loved it. And then I started going into schools. And uh, put another picture. You see, that lady, that's Cheryl Tonga on Weed Island. She came with her husband. And that's me. I mean, you tell me I'm going to change Africa when I, I don't even have a waist. <laughs> I'm hungry. I have no hope. And you're telling me I'm going to be the, 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 planting churches in Uganda, planting churches in Africa. Building a university, a factory to produce world changers for God. God knows what he wants to do through you. Yes. Yes. Say, I am, I am anointed. God has a plan through you. What you have gone through, that's not you. God looked at Gideon. He saw a man who can turn the whole nation around and kick the Midianite out. But the environment had programmed Gideon to be a man hiding food, surviving every day. Many of us, we miss God's opportunity because we plan for me and myself. We worry about me and myself. Me and my future. Me and my retirement. What, how, what will I do after this? How will I survive? We forget Isaiah 46 verse 3 and 4 says, I am the one who carried you in your mother's womb. I will carried you in your childhood, in your youth, and I will carry you even when you are gray. He has planned for us and through us say amen. So those people, they cried. I was surprised to see the American crying for me. I said, this is incredible. As he said, God wants me to sponsor you in the Bible college to go to America because he's going to use you. And I said, no. I'm an auto mechanic. I repair cars. So God knows what is in you. Your mom doesn't know. Your father doesn't know. Your teachers don't know. Even your pastor doesn't know. Yeah. My pastors didn't tell me. It took somebody else to come and tell me. And I refused. And for two years, I kept doing what I was doing. Thank God that after two years, that was in 83 when they came, and in 85, I, was, they, I started teaching those kids, and I took time to pray and fast. You see, when you build altar, and you dwell at altar, God will open your spiritual ears to hear a small, still voice. God will open your spiritual eyes to see what the Father is doing. God will give you sound mind to perceive what he's doing. But before I did that, I was just doing a routine. We are Asha, we are singing bass, I'm repairing the cars. That's all. And I'm serving God. That's not bad to be an Asha. That's not bad to be singing bass. But God had a bigger plan. Amen. I don't know whose message is this, but God is after you say amen. amen. And the Bible says when Gideon realized God was saying through you, go in your strengths. I will save the nation of Israel out of you. He believed. And he said, whoa, I've seen an angel. I'm going to die. And God said, you are not dying, honey. You are not dying. 
For the first time, Gideon built an altar and worshipped God, dedicated himself. If you take time and dwell on the altar, God will give you spiritual eyes to see what he is doing. Because Jesus said in the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 19, the, father, the son does nothing. The son does nothing. Except what he sees the father is doing. So it took Gideon at the altar to see what the father was doing. And when he built the altar, praying, that night the Bible said, that very night, the Lord he came again and said, Son, it is time to clean your father's house. First assignment. Pull down your father's altar and build a proper altar. Yeah. I pray and prophesy over you, some of you, your families are struggling. I pray that that anointing that came upon Gideon and he used it by the Holy Spirit to break down the altars of ungodly from his family. Let that come upon you. Go and pull down the altars that are ungodly in your families. Let your brothers be born again, your fathers be born again, your mothers be born again, your uncles, your cousins be born again. He pulled down the ungodly altars and built a proper altar. He found 10 boys, younger men, and they did it. I pray this generation, you see, there's a generation, every generation God raises up men and women. That's why when Pastor Dan Hammer was teaching us, he was young. I was 29. I think he was also somewhere like in 30s. And when he was teaching, I could see. Now, I was telling him, and I'm telling him, the strategies Danny used, they will not work for him. Hallelujah. Because the strategies Moses used, they never worked for Joshua. Moses used the staff. And Joshua went at the altar and said, God, show me the strategy for my generation. How to take the children into the promised land. And God told Joshua, don't use a staff, just use the Levites who carry the covenant. That Yorodan, that is angry, that can carry cows and vehicles. Let those who carry the covenant step in it and it will stop. So if Joshua got a staff of Moses and said, Jordan would have said, what are you doing, young boy? Because God gives the people strategy for every generation. Amen. Moses never walked around Jericho. God gave Joshua another strategy. Walk around. Hallelujah. So that's why every generation, God is looking for warriors. Men and women of valor to use to change families. To bring transformation in families, transformation in communities, in cities, in nations. Hallelujah. So when God talked to, to, to Gideon, it was time for Gideon to build the altar. After he established the altar, the second altar, family altar, the whole community came and said, Bring your son, he must die. And the father said, I've been serving this God all these years. If he can't defend himself, I'm done. I'm joining my, father, my son's side now. <laughs> I pray that family members in your family will join your God. Yes. It is time as you rise up to believe God, to trust God, God is going to use you to bring a transformation in your families. Yeah. You believe that? Yeah. 
Let it be so. Amen. Hallelujah. So the Bible says the younger man, his father got born again. He joined his God. After he got born again, I prayed for my father for 18 years. And on the 18th year, my father gave his life and I baptized him myself in water. And my father always treasured that big picture when I'm, I'm baptizing him. He made a big picture of it and put it in his living room. Some of your family members are waiting for you. Say amen. amen. When you are baptized with the power of the Holy Spirit and you have Jesus in you, you are a dangerous team. Yeah. Unstoppable. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So the Bible says when these nations attacked the nation of Israel, the Spirit of God came upon Gideon. And Gideon blew the trumpet. And when he blew the trumpet, all of the Jews gathered. And Gideon felt like, Is he, are you really with me? And God told him, go, chapter 7, go and hear. When he entered the camp of those Midianites, he had the man of giving a report. I had a dream. This big piece of bread, tumbling, came and hit our camp. And our camp was no more. And somebody said, that is Gideon. <laughs> when you team up with God, even if people are going to start dreaming, you're dangerous. They are going to see those who have been fighting you, they are going to be scared of you. You see, in Africa with Papa Ron, when we went, can you show another picture, see if you can see Papa Ron? Put the next picture there for me, if you can come. You, many of you maybe didn't know Papa Ron and Mama Shuri. Yeah. I had a vision of them. I was in the Bible college, you were here. But by then it was at Philadelphia Church. We were praying and fasting three days. And I dreamt this white man tall. After God told me, go back to your village, start a church. I saw this tall, big white man. He said, and take that man with you. Him and you will do my work. I had never seen him. I pray that this younger generation today, you will see God like that. Yeah. I looked at Philadelphia Church. I looked at Sierra Bible College. There was no that man. And then my friend Dan Rogers took me to their church, Colonial Bible Church, which became Family Worship Center. And immediately I went there, I saw Papa Ronnie coming. And I said, that's the man I dreamt. I went to him and I said, sir, you are the man. God told me to take you with me to my village to start a church. And he said, what? <laughs> Younger man, I don't do Africa. And you said Uganda? He that I mean, I don't do Uganda. I'm going to Spain and France. And he kept running away quickly from me. And I told Dan Roger, I said, that is a man God showed me the dream to take. He said, did you tell him? I said, yes. What did he say? He said, he's not the one. What are you doing? I said, nothing. I'm taking him. <laughs> if you want the whole story, you will see it in the book because I have, I'm preaching in America. You have to keep time. So, God have had the way he turned Ronnie's heart. And Ronnie put a chapter in here. How this African man pointed a finger at him and said, I'm taking you. And he said, it's stay away from me. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit ended up bringing him. And together, that man, you see, there was nothing. You saw our pictures. There was no electricity, no water, nothing. That's a pit latrine. They were cleaning it. I told the Papa Ron, I had to teach him how to squat on it. Because for him, he wanted to go and sit on it like this. And I said, no, they don't do like that. They do like this. That's how we started, small beginning. But now people come to, Af to Uganda, what World Outreach Ministries is doing, we have 24 grade schools, high schools, Bible colleges, 
planted 351 churches in Uganda. We have churches in Rwanda, in Burundi, in Kenya, in Congo, in Tanzania, in West Africa, in Northern Ghana. God, don't fear to start what God wants you to start. Because God, when he look at you, he see the end product for you and through you. He never knew. Now a year ago, he went to heaven. I was supposed to come with Mama Shuri here, but something caught her up. But she's, still, she's 81 only, and she's still coming to Uganda. Amen. Next year, she's coming. Some people are here saying, I'm scared, spiders. I'm scared. I don't know how to do this. God has put a potential in you, Gideon. Say amen. amen. The key is to see what God is doing. This is a new leadership. This young man, God is going to give him a vision and strategies. Are you going to see what God is doing and run with him? Because God is going to do bigger things in this ministry. This church is going where you have never gone before. Many people are going to be changed, healed, transformed. That's where you are going. Believe me, say amen. amen. When God called Gideon, he never knew what God was planning. God doesn't show you the whole thing. Yeah. You see, many of us crowd around God, but we don't see what he's doing, and we miss our opportunity. We miss our window. We miss. I want to conclude with this. You all know that Gideon, a man who was thinking about me and myself, God used him to deliver a whole nation by the Holy Spirit. We come in the New Testament. In the Gospel of Mark, we see Jesus in Matthew, in John, in Luke. Jesus feeding 5,000. The Bible talks about 5,000 men crowding around Jesus. And if there are 5,000 men, how many women do you think were there? Hmm? More. Maybe 10,000, 8,000. Because wherever you see 5,000 men, women might be like 10,000. And if it is African family, how many children do you think were there? I mean, when you read the Bible, start to think like that. How many kids were there? How many youths were there? How many children were there? They only counted men. So there were all the people pushing around Jesus. But they missed the opportunity to work with him. Another reporter says they had stayed three days in the desert with him. But Jesus looked at them and had compassion and asked the disciples, where shall we get food to feed this? The Bible says he only asked them to test them because he knew what he was going to do. You see, God wants to work with you, but he doesn't want to force you. God wants you to team up with you to do his purposes. So he tells the disciple, go and find out if there is any man, any woman, any boy, any girl, any younger teenagers who can invest their lunch into my ministry and I perform a miracle here. And they go around, anybody invest your lunch? Anybody want to work with Jesus? Don't tell me 5,000 men didn't have their lunch boxes. They all didn't have the eyes to see what the father was doing. It's very important to be serving and working with God, but to see what he's doing and don't miss opportunity. Yeah. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you spiritual eyes to see. Yes. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you spiritual ears to hear. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you spiritual mind to perceive what is happening. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because I believe God is going to show you new things. 
to do in your generation. And I pray that people will see what the Father will be doing through you and team up with you. In September, I handed over the pastoral work. But before I did, I told the, the younger men, start dreaming. I'm no longer going to dream for this yet. You dream for it. You see what I... We used to have curtains. So they said, can we remove all those curtains? We don't like them. I said, you dream. So they removed all the curtains. They, they changed the whole face. And I liked it. Because now they are, they, are, they are doing things in their generation. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, as Andrew and Philip are going around looking for food for investors, people who can invest their lunch, their resources into Jesus' ministry, all the men, they were like Gideon. The anointing of Gideon was upon them, <laughs> hiding their food. Not mine, not mine, not mine. You know, that's how the church missed opportunity to work with God. Yeah. To be part of the miracles. Yeah. Don't tell me 8,000 women didn't have cookies and chocolate bars. <laughs> they all zipped up their purse and said, not mine, not mine, not mine, not mine. And all the teenagers and all the... But the boy who had the spiritual eyes to see what the father was doing. To hear the voice of God. To perceive with spiritual mind the moment. To seize the moment. Many of us, we fail to see the moment to be part of what God is doing. God can tell you, go pray for him, I'm healing him. And you say, ah, ah that's the pastor, that's the pastor. Ah. And God just wants to borrow your hands. Yeah. You know, whatever God does, he borrowed Mary's womb. Yeah. He borrowed the upper room. Yeah. He said, where can we meet for last supper? I don't have room. Folks have holes, but I don't. But you go, you will see somebody carrying a jar of water, follow them, tell them, can the master borrow this place? So they borrowed the upper room. He borrowed the Peter's boat. He borrowed the donkey to go to Jerusalem. He borrowed the boy's lunch. He borrowed the tomb. Now he wants to borrow your feet to take him to the neighbor. He wants to borrow your mouth so he can, you, he can talk to your neighbors that God loves you. Can you tell her I love you? I'm not, no, I'm, I'm not doing that. Uh -oh, no, not my mouth, not my tongue. Can I borrow your tongue to tell them I love them? No. Can I borrow your hand, lay them on the sick and I heal them? What if they are not healed? I, I'm not going to be ashamed here, no. So we fail to seize the moment. Because we think about me and my, I will be ashamed. People will think I'm not anointed. No, you are not the healer. You are just a chosen instrument. So the boy said, Andrew, take my lunch. I'm available. I'm willing to invest my life. And the mother said, stop it. And the boy said, no, mother. <laughs> and you know, the father don't talk much. The father just looked and said, And the boy said, no, daddy, I'm ready. I see what the father is. And I'm willing to invest my lunch into Jesus' ministry to take care of all of us, to make a difference in this wilderness. And the big sister said, I'm not sharing my lunch with you. I don't care. I can fast. I can't miss the moment. And Jesus got the boys lunch prayed and served everybody because the boys saw what the father is and he patterned the ways God 
teamed up with God. Gideon saw what the, what the father was doing and accepted it to do, to clean the father's house, to believe God, and to bring a transformation in the whole village. God is calling upon the church today. The church is not the building. The church is you and me. We have Jesus in our hearts. We have anointing of the Holy Spirit. You plus Jesus plus the Holy Spirit, you are a very dangerous team, unstoppable, unbeatable. Yes. God just wants you to allow him to use your feet to take him somewhere. God just wants to borrow your hands to heal the sick. God wants you to get your resources and put them into what he's doing. God is looking for co-workers, partners. Yep. Are you ready? Yes. God is looking for partners. Yes. Don't miss your season. The boy seized his moment. That's right. The father and mother and all the women and all the men missed it to be part of God's miracles. This is a season we have to pray and be in sensitive, sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Don't miss your window. Don't miss to be part of what God is doing. Invest in missions. If God speaks to him, we are going door to door, go. Whatever God instructed this leadership to do, be part of it. Don't miss the season. Romans chapter 10, verse 13 to 15. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be How can they be saved unless without a preacher? How can they believe whom they have not heard about? So there are so many people waiting for you. Waiting for the church and for the church we are in the four walls safe. Laying hands on each other. And how can they preach unless they are? That's why I'm so thankful that we've been sending sister and I every month to go in the Burundi, to go in Kenya, to go to West Africa. We thank you. And he say, how beautiful are the feet of yeah. those who preach the gospel. Right. If you are in here and you are not involved in missions, how stinking are your feet? <laughs> That's simple. How beautiful are the feet of those involved in missions? How stinking are the feet of those who are not involved in reaching the lost? So are your feet beautiful or stinking? <laughs> you answer that with the Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you that you are taking this ministry to another level. Joshua took the nation of Israel where they were just dreaming to go. Where they were just having a vision to go. But Joshua took them there. I pray you are God of generations. You are God of Abraham generation, Isaac generation, and Jacob generation. And you didn't end there. You said all your descendants. You continue with King David. And you continue with Jesus. Because when you called Abraham, you were seeing Jesus. And today we are seated in the vision that Abraham conceived in Genesis chapter 12. I pray for these men and women, my brothers and sisters, that they will not miss their season to be part of what you are doing. Raise them up to be men, women, full of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues every day. So God can show them what to do with their families, what to do in their cities, what to do in the neighborhoods. Raise world changers from this house who will go to the end of the world. I bless this church. I bless your sons and daughters. But I pray as you reveal yourself to Gideon, reveal yourself to somebody here. 
as you revealed yourself to that younger boy, reveal yourself to somebody here that no one will miss their season of teaming up with Jesus. No one will miss to seize the moment. No one will miss their window of opportunity to partner with you. I pray for the sick. I come against every disease, every pain. I cast ulcers. I cast the spirit of cancer, diabetes, high blood pressures, backache, deaf spirit, complication with eyes, every pain from the top of the head to the bottom of, of the feet. If you are sick, I command every sickness. Listen to me. Devil, pain, sickness, diseases, go in the name of Jesus. And I command healing over your body now. I command the power of resurrection that raised Jesus from the dead to heal your body. Be made whole. No more pain. No more sickness. Freedom. I command you freedom in your body. Freedom in your body. Freedom in your body. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Thank you for loving us. Thank you for running the race with us. May God richly bless you.